We were living in Sydney for 15 years and we were in a, a, a very small apartment um, in um, Kirribilli. And then when kids come along, uh, we really didn't have any sort of family support here and it was, it was quite a, a struggle to do anything. So we ended up um, moving back to Norell's hometown, which was Adelaide, also for some space and, and with kids just to have a house and a, a backyard and live the suburban dream. When, when we first arrived in Adelaide, we lived with, we, we, we were trying to find actually somewhere to live. So we, so we bumped in with Narelle's parents for about six weeks while we tried to find a place. And I went to the, the actual supermarket, the big mega mall one day to get on my hair cut, so it was really long. And the little hair, the, the really young hairdresser sort of cut it all off and she said, you know, because I told her the story, and she said, there you go, you know, a new haircut for a new start. And I thought, oh, that's nice, you know, that, that's, that's good. And when I was driving back, I sort of started to feel very queasy and strange. And it was sort of just on dusk and pulled into Narelle's parents' driveway and uh, sort of walked, crawled out onto the, the, the back lawn and just started vomiting. And it was... It was I, I think I've only vomited twice in my life. It was a really strange, surreal experience. I didn't know what it was from. And Narelle and her mum and dad were watching television in the back room. And I, I sort of said, Narelle! And she'd realised what was going on. And she said, what, you want me to come out and photograph you? And I'm like, yes! And I heard Laurie, her dad, sort of get up from the chair and, and, and uh, sort of, yeah, you've got to be joking. And then <laughs> Narelle, she came out with the camera, started flashing away, and then Narelle's mum came out. And... She said, as soon as she saw it, she goes, Oh, Laurie, he's vomiting into the Christmas tree bucket. And it was then and there, you know, while I was, that I realised that, you know, that was the project. I'd been shooting all these pictures of, of the family life and, and, and not really, know, really knowing how to put it together. But all of a sudden, that was the, that was the link to it all. And, uh, and so from then, that was when I started to hone the idea more and, and, and the whole concept of the show. All the pictures are real moments in my family's life, and um, the way I conceive a show, but it's like a it's like a, a giant jigsaw puzzle. Once the idea forms, then it it, it becomes you start seeing things that uh, emotionally or or in the actual uh, whether it's a colour or a or a shape that relates to some other picture that you might have shot two years ago, but that becomes important and it's the relationship between the pictures that you build up is the most important thing for this show. There's a picture of, of, of um, Narelle's brother's, the inside of Narelle's brother's house, and it's, it's the, the wreath seen through the glass pane, and that picture was, was important when I shot it, but then, about six months later, uh, Jem, my son, he swallowed a $2 coin, and it was quite a traumatic um, uh, event when it happened. And it was scary, being a parent, it was incredibly scary because he had this coin stuck in his throat. And it was panic and what do I do? And as a, as a parent, you know, I'm new to being a, a dad. And it's that fear of, of the unknown. But then, when he, when he got his x-ray, here's the $2 coin. And there's this visual structure that's, that's similar to the, the, the glass pane inside the... The, the doorway of the house and there's sort of this strange relationship so here we are in the house and literally inside one of the family members and, I, and, I, and I, I'm always amazed at how those things appear or come together it's something you could never ever have ever thought of but that's what life does it produces sort of something more special than you can possibly conceive and it's being on the lookout and conscious of those things and what you've shot before to bring them all together and, and make the, 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 the bigger body work. You know, it was the first Christmas that Jem, the four, my, my, he's just turned four, really understood. You know, he all of a sudden understood who Santa Claus was. And there was this incredible excitement. And so it was amazing watching, watching him deal with something like Christmas. And then when it came down to take time to take down the tree, he was like, no, Dad, we can't take... He didn't want it to end. He didn't want Christmas to end. And, and we actually went away for a, for a trip onto the, to the East Coast for, for two months. Uh, for a show that I had over there and when we got back, Adelaide had experienced this incredible hot weather. I think they had like 25 days over 40 degrees or something like that. It was, it was amazing. And we walked back in the front door and there was the tree and it, it just, the, everything had just fallen off. And it was this most beautiful object. 
but it was sort of strange. It was as if it had been sort of living in the house, you know, for the time that we, we were away. There's, there's, there's an element of me, um, like I'm with my family, um, and because I'm around them and shooting pictures the whole time, there is a sense that they do get used to you being there, and there is a sort of theatre that starts to become part of what you're doing, because they realise that they're part of the bigger picture. But they, there's also a naivety as well, they don't quite know why I'm shooting something in particular, they can't see it until they eventually saw the show. Um, but look, what, there, is, there is this point where if there's one of the kids are in a great position, I'll just say, hold it there, you know, it's, it's as a portrait, I don't mind doing that. But the moments and little things that have happened aren't set up. They're, they're still moments grabbed from that, that life. And it's amazing when you actually um, sit back and, and observe the family and observe everything that goes on every second of the day, things that you're normally used to looking at as being normal, it's amazing how strange they then appear.